This is part 4 of the RIF 600 build. Today we are going to complete the wiring and all the configuration we need to do. We'll start out with the power supplies and I'm using three different power supplies in this build. Two 24 volt power supplies and a smaller 5 volt supply. The power supplies will be switched on with the same main switch but I will connect the different components like I've indicated in this slide. I'm doing the mains connections first. Be careful with this and get some help if you're not comfortable doing it yourself. This is the power supply socket that came off my AlphaWise and uh, the switch as well. I have completed uh, the wiring for power distribution with 24 volts going to the SKR 1.4 to both of the MOSFET boards and also to the fans. There's one fan over here as well. And they will be constantly running as long as the power supply is switched on. There is a third power supply. This is for five volts for the single board computer. I have connected the controller signals for the MOSFET boards from the SKR 1.4 and I'm using green and blue just like uh, resistor color codes with the green being the lowest number 5 in the resistor and blue is 6 but just to keep the right order and I have connected these to the control boards with the green one for heat bed 1 and the blue one for heat bed 2. And I'm just missing the cables from the MOSFET boards up to the heat beds. You could, if you like, use a different voltage for the heat beds as they are totally isolated from the rest of the build. The controller card on the red board, that is the SKR 1.4, I'm going to use that for Z, but it's missing some separate drivers and they are in this interesting packaging. And this is what it looks like with the stepper drivers and the heat sinks in place. The controller card for Z also needs some firmware and you install that by using a SD card. But how do we get the firmware onto the SD card? One very important component in a build like this is the single board computer or SPC. I'm using the Radza Rock 3C. I find this to be a very good board. It's inexpensive and easy to get hold of. Affiliate links in the description. My first ever, by the way. A good single board computer without any software doesn't do much good. And I'm relying heavily on Clipper in this build. One very nice feature in Clipper is that it supports several MCUs and I'm going to use two MCUs in the build, one for Z and one for XY and I'm using inexpensive controller boards. You can use almost anything that supports Clipper. As you can see these two cheap boards that's enough for all I need in this build. To get the single board computer up and running we need an image and I found the minimal one. This is 322 megs so not the one with every desktop feature and unnecessary code. I will then use the SD card, a 32 gig SD card and uh, use the Balena Etcher. This takes a long time. I'm going to speed this up a little bit. With that done we insert the SD card and reboot the single board computer and we can log in via PuTTY or some other terminal. I'm using Radza as username and Radza as password. That's the default on this board. To install Clipper I'll use this support script. This is very very good and the documentation is in detail. You can just copy and paste into the terminal to get this done. I'm simply following this guide step by step and it will take some time to get all the dependencies and all the files you need. Eventually you will get to a main menu which will list all the components that you can install via this script. I'm installing Clipper, Moonraker, Mainsail and Crow's Nest. 
After you reboot and try to connect to the web interface of the printer, you'll get this error message. Clipper can't find our controller cards yet, we'll fix that later. But we can do a few other things, like for instance setting a name for this printer. I'm calling it the RIF 600. We can also check on the machine settings and having a look at the update manager and see what we are missing. Wow, 103 packages missing. And that is all because I made a mistake when I installed the card, I should have updated the image. The image was quite old. We'll then have to upgrade from here and this is going to take a very long time. So I'm just going to edit this out. We'll check this again and everything is now okay. We will now compile the firmware for the controller cards. And we start by doing this sudo apt install make. And again, I need the password. I can then do make menu config and I will get this uh, menu. In here I have to choose the type of processor I'm using. In this case is the Raspberry Pi 2040. I then select quit and in this case I already stored this information. I'll now do a make clean and a make and that will compile the firmware for the Pico. You now have a file called clipper.uf2 in the out directory. You can copy that onto your Pico. After you have installed the firmware on the controller boards and rebooted them, we can have a look at the IDs these uh, two controller boards are using. Those are in light blue here. We need those IDs in the config file. Looking at the configuration file, this is where you enter those two IDs you just found. This is the MCU and the other one is the MCU XY. So the upper one is the SKR 1.4, the other one is the Pico. Other parts of this configuration file isn't all that special. I have a, I'm using a sensorless homing in this. I'm using a couple of Y stepper motors. One thing you need to keep in mind is that these two stepper motors, they will have to be spinning in opposite directions. So you have to use an invert sign on one of them. Rest of this is not that uh, different. I'm using a stepper Y and a stepper Y1. When it comes to the heat beds, that's where there is a big difference because I'm defining a second heat bed. So there's the normal heat bed. And then there's a second one, which I just called a heater generic heater underscore bed underscore two. I'll upload this configuration file, but please keep in mind it's still beta. This is what it looks like in main sail with both heat beds connected, wired up. I can address them separately, but obviously when I do this from a slicer, I will address both of them at the same time. With all the wiring and configuration done, I am ready to do some testing of basic motion. When doing this, you must decide what your reference point will be. This is my 0.0. .0. Increasing values will be to the back and to the right and downwards. I'm using the stepper bus function to check that this moves in the correct direction. This should move to the right and it does. I'll do the Y motor, one of them. They are independent and this one is also correct. It moves to the back. And this is the other side. That one also moves to the back. This is the first Z stepper motor and it moves in the incorrect direction. It moves up and not down like it was supposed to do. I changed that in config and this is the right way. It should go down. This is what's called the Z1. The first one was a Z. This is a Z1. I'm keeping to the Warren 2.4 naming. 
This is Z2. This is also correct. I should really cut down those lead screws, they are a bit too long. And this is the Z3, also correct. So that's all good. Some of these base plates are a bit rough, I'm probably going to reprint them. Just like in my other builds, I'm going to use a D sub to the tool head. And I've been doing this many times now, so I'm not going to reshoot all that, but I will like you to watch the Voronish 2 or maybe the Lemon Breeze video to see the last part of a build like this. I'm not going to do another video about that. Hopefully you found this build series entertaining or maybe even inspiring. I might publish some more files for this build, but it's probably going to be just the case for the Pico and some other details. Wishing you all the best and maybe I'll see you again in the future. Bye for now.